What's up guys, my name is Cliff with the Creator's Cup. Today we're gonna dive into the new leaks on the DJI Mavic 3 Pro, specifically the photos by Drone Modelismo, which show a two lens or two camera design built into the gimbal. We're gonna reverse engineer that design and see if we can figure out what they're actually up to. Is it a shared sensor? Is it two sensors? Does it actually have zoom? Also, the new Mavic 3 or more likely Pro 3 is gonna have a gimbal that locks. And we're gonna talk about why I think it's more than just for storage. So let's get into it. So the first thing we're gonna talk about are the photos leaked by Drone Model Ismo. I'm sure you've already seen these online if you're following the Mavic 3 or from here on, let's call it the 3 Pro because that's the most likely name, but I'm sure you've seen these photos online already. What we're gonna actually do is dissect these photos. And before we do that, let's take a brief moment and discuss why they would go with a two lens setup. I personally don't think it's two cameras. I think it's two lenses in one sensor. And again, we'll get into that. What are the advantages of a two lens, one fixed wide lens and one zoom lens? Well. As many of you know, DJI tried the Mavic 2 Pro and they tried the Mavic 2 Zoom. The Mavic 2 Zoom was great for illegal activities and the Mavic 2 Pro was great for high quality photos and videos. I don't really trust you Zoomers, I had one. Other than just being weird, Zoom offers advantages like parallax. Parallax gives you that epic movement in your background that you just can't really achieve with a wide lens on a drone. You can also zoom in on things like events or maybe high school football games that you're really not allowed to get close to. Not to mention if you're wanting to film wildlife because you really shouldn't just fly up close to a bird or a wild animal. So zoom has its advantages and we're talking about optical zoom here. If they give us digital zoom and brag about that, I'm never buying a DJI drone again. Optical zoom is so incredibly important. So why would they give us a fixed lens? Why wouldn't they just make the zoom lens go wide? I would say due to technical issues, they probably want to have a fixed aperture on the zoom lens and a variable aperture on the fixed lens, which gives you a nice high quality wide lens capable of just fantastic photos and video with a variable aperture, which has so many benefits like depth of field and adjusting your exposure without having to change your shutter speed while you're on the fly. When you see a cine lifter with an actual cinema camera on a drone, it usually has a wide lens. And that's for a good reason, because it gives a look that is just more epic and really just kind of shows the scene. Wide lenses are more well, widely used with drones, but zooms, like we mentioned, do have their advantage. So the question is, how will they do this? How will they achieve both a fixed wide lens with a variable aperture and a zoom lens? And I believe they're gonna do it all into one sensor. So after seeing these drawings, we decided to reverse engineer them in kind of a rudimentary way. And this is sheer speculation, but we decided uh, let's go on the computer and see how they would do it. And one thing that came to mind to me is when you look at a DSLR camera, which I know this is a mirrorless, but just for the sake of the discussion, it has a viewfinder. And the way they generally work is you have a mirror inside on a DSLR and that mirror moves out of the way when you take a picture. When that mirror is in the way, it is not actually shedding light on the sensor. The light is going up to the actual viewfinder on top of the camera. What if they reversed this design and allowed to have two lenses going in using the mirror to switch from one lens to the other? So if we look at what they may have done, they may just have a mirror or a prism inside of here that allows them to switch back and forth from one lens to the other with a simple movement of a mirror. This would allow them to share one sensor, which I believe is their 5.4K sensor, without having a tiny sensor for the zoom lens. Smaller sensors mean lower quality. That also means a lot less light getting to the sensor because it means smaller pixels. Also, with the recent chip shortages, I wouldn't be surprised if they really just wanna stick with one sensor anyway. Another possible option is to actually have the sensor rotate itself back and forth and have both lenses on a slight angle. This is advantage of being attached to a gimbal. I think this is less likely, but hey, you know, it's fun to speculate. If you guys have any ideas, definitely drop a comment below and let's start a constructive conversation about it. Back to the two sensor idea though. There is kind of a wild theory, and this is again sheer speculation, but what if it really was one lens that was wide, also could zoom, and by some magic had variable aperture. What if the top lens isn't a zoom lens at all? What if that lens is for an operator and the second is for whoever's controlling the camera? Maybe one sensor for the operator, one sensor for whoever's filming. 
I kind of doubt this because mostly you would want that secondary camera fixed to the drone and not on a gimbal so you could point the gimbal away from the direction you're flying, but it's a pretty cool theory. Speaking of the gimbal, they're saying it's going to lock. For storage, yeah, sure. But what about locking in flight? What if the gimbal actually allows you to lock mid-flight and doesn't have any movement at all to it? This kind of brings me to my next thought. The Air 2S was supposed to work with the goggles. We made a whole video about that where we duct taped it to the FPV drone. But anyway, the Air 2S had a gimbal that moved not just up and down like the DJI FPV drone, but it also moved side to side like most of these GPS drones do. The issue I could see with that, and the reason why they probably did not allow for the FPV goggles to work with it, is it would be very disoriented. If you've ever flown FPV, proper FPV, you would know that these drones are going so fast and going through really tight spaces. And if the gimbal was looking a little to the left, it would be very disorienting. But if the gimbal was fixed in a locked position, you could fly just like a regular FPV drone. It would be much more stable. And I honestly think that's why they didn't ever do with the Air 2S because so many of them would have been destroyed and it would have been really bad news for their care refresh. So will the Pro 3 have FPV capability? I really actually think it will. And I also think the gimbal will lock or be very near locking when you're in FPV mode so that you don't crash it because you're looking to the left and the drone is going to the right. I would definitely love to hear your thoughts on this in the comments as well. As far as other specs, well, honestly, I could try to memorize all of them, but I'm not even gonna bother. This is a list I've seen by Drone DJ and a few other people online who I'm gonna link down below, but this is what they are saying it's going to have. This may very well change, so that's why we're gonna use a cheat sheet. You've probably already seen this, so at this point you can leave the video if you don't wanna stick around. It has a new collision avoidance system. The new system has less sensors. It no longer has sensors on the side and back. It has sensors on the corners, which allows them to use less sensors, which kind of goes back to our earlier theory on chip shortages and everything else. But it also probably allows them to use a wider lens on those sensors and use less processing power potentially, which opens up more possibilities for higher frame rates and everything else while still using obstacle avoidance. I do believe it will still sense in all directions though, so less sensors does not mean that it can't see sideways like the Air 2S for example. Like we talked about, the top's going to have 7x zoom. The lower camera is supposed to be capable of 5.7K with a 24mm lens and supposedly a 16mm wide lens adapter. The aperture is supposed to be f2.8 and it better be variable. If it's not variable, I'm done with you DJI. It better be variable. That's why we went back to the Mavic 2 Pro. Air 2S is a better drone, but sometimes you need variable aperture. Apple ProRes, that would be great. That's what they're saying. A one terabyte internal hard drive and possibly an upgraded version with a two terabyte hard drive? Well, honestly, you can get memory cards that big now, so that's not as surprising, and it would really be nice to not have to think about those memory cards. Plus, they fail sometimes. Pretty rare, but it does happen, so that's cool. They're talking about a 5,000 milliamp hour battery, maybe even 6,000, which is gonna get us 40 minutes plus of flight time. I wouldn't be surprised if it's even longer than that. The battery mount's supposed to be in the back, kind of like the minis, and it's gonna use the same radio as the Air 2S, as well as come out with a new smart controller, which would be great because we used to own the Crystal Sky and the software was just outdated, and I'm assuming the smart controller, which I don't own, but it probably has outdated software as well. So it'd be really good to see a new smart controller with faster processing power and new software. And of course, the locking gimbal for storage and potentially FPV mode. It also looks like the release date is January of 2022, maybe even February. This latest video said October of this year. I kind of doubt it. Uh, maybe, but it doesn't look good. Um, Let's hope for October. So yeah, I left that at the end because that is complete speculation at this point. And so is a lot of the stuff in this video. So frankly, I would love to see you guys leave comments below on what you think is gonna happen, when you think the release date's gonna be, how you think this camera is gonna work. And let's just start a discussion about it. And while you're down there, why don't you give it a thumbs up because it definitely helps out the channel. Well, thanks again, guys. I can't wait to see you in the next video.